Hello there, and welcome to Everything Coptic, and I hope everyone is having a blessed Pascha. I really need to say, during this digital time, the best way to benefit from the Pascha are to pray these prayers yourself. Go into your prayer area, go into somewhere quiet. As great as the recorded prayers and the Zoom prayer meetings are, there is nothing like going with your own book or Coptic reader or whatever app you use and reading for yourself. If you know the tunes, singing these. If you don't know the tunes, then just reading, praying, re even reading the litanies. Doing these things, just like trying to cut off the technology is good. As helpful as technology is, I mean, goodness, you're even watching this on YouTube. It's good to try to disconnect, do the prayers yourself, sit on the floor, sit somewhere quiet, isolated, dark, whatever it is, um, be with family, sure, but also pray with yourself. And I've heard this language, it, it, it came up last night in the 11th hour, but the coming of the Lord, and the Lord shall come as a thief, and the hour the Lord shall come is unknown, only the Father knows. And when will that coming be? Well, you know the signs, but if the if the rich man had known the time and hour, the, the, the thief would have broken in, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into, or a strong man would have watched. Why doesn't the Lord tell us when he is coming? Why is it that he's going to come at an hour we don't think, we do not expect? Why does he provide a parable of a servant who is very good, waiting for his master to come, and the master comes and finds the servant doing an excellent job and seats him at the table and serves him, and another servant beats the men and maid servants, and the master comes and cuts him in two and appoints his portion with the unbelievers. Why is it a secret? And I saw this when reading the church fathers when I was studying their sayings in regards to the Antichrist in Second Thessalonians chapter two. And again, I believe he says in First Thessalonians chapter five that he comes in thief as a thief in the night. Why does he allow us to uh, be tempted? Why are there many antichrists? I think we saw that in one of the gospels of this morning of Tuesday day. Why are there many who try to deceive the elect? Why does God allow us to go through these trials towards the end? Why doesn't God just let us know the day? And there are a few obvious reasons. I mean, who's? I think a lot of us would procrastinate. It's how we handle assignments. We don't really work too hard until the due date. And at times, we might mess around so much that we might not even respect or remember the due date. But I think the biggest reason is a lot of our lives are staged. In a lot of our lives, we have too much control. Like if I want, you know, I can take a picture and post it on social media and suddenly like, look, look at my prayer area. Look what I'm doing for Pascha week. Look at all the things that I set up. Look at all the icons I have. Look how organized and orderly my life is. I mean, goodness, I even I can stage this room as much as I want, and that's the reality of it. What we post and what we share with others is what we choose, and we have great control. And I can you don't know what what else is in this area that I'm in. Really, you don't. You don't know what else is in my life besides what I share. And that's the reality with most and with all persons, really. Unless we see them face to face. But even then, we can be as fake, superficial, or sincere. Honestly, you can be sincere. And we are able to put on whatever facade that we want. And the Lord doesn't want us to stage our lives in regards to his coming. He doesn't want us to be master actors. He wants us to be masters of virtue and masters of preparedness and readiness. Hence, he tells us, watch. We must be masters of watching for the Lord. And that must mean being ready at all times. If I have a home and, you know, guests could come at any time, I'm going to make sure my home is clean. 
If I have a classroom, I'm going to make sure the classroom is always prepared. If I have an office or a workspace, I'm going to make sure that it's always ready if clients or anyone else or supervisors were to come and see. Because I don't want them to see a mess. I don't want them to think I'm disorganized. Or maybe I am disorganized, but I don't want them to know that. I want to present myself in a certain way. And it's unfortunate. Sometimes we uh, talk to certain people or we're in a certain group chat or and just not the right words come out. You know, the, the wrong part of our heart is exposed and we say, oh, this is such a, a bad reflection of who I am. This isn't my character. And yet we live with that. We live with the impressions that we put on people. And I wonder when the Lord comes, what impression he'll get of us. You know, do we have a good relationship with God that he knows who we are? Or does he come and find us and he finds us in sin and he finds us in a terrible condition? I say, you know, that doesn't really represent who I am. But here the Lord came and here I am wallowing in sin. So what does it teach us? It teaches us we need to be watchful because it is possible to be ready for the Lord. I mean, he tells us to be ready. Doesn't mean we're 24 seven reading our Bible, but it really must mean that we have to live in a way that if the Lord were to come right now, he would see this and it would be pleasant. I'd be like, yes, the Lord. I remember when I was young, actually, um, my dad would want me to study all the time and I really wouldn't like studying all the time. So I try every now and then to sneak in some sort of fun activity, whether it be drawing or if I could play a game or anything. And I would just hope that he would come at the moment that I'm studying. Because if he comes at the moment I'm playing, he's going to say, oh, you, well, you spent all day playing. You didn't do any studying today. And it's like, goodness, I could have studied like, what, seven hours that day. But I played for 10 minutes and he caught me during the 10 minutes. And it's, oh, you, well, you played all day. So then you just, you just learn, just study all the time or learn when he comes home. And that's really what I did. I learned when he came home. Because then at that time, I would then do my studying. I would go the whole day playing. And that might be how we would respond to the second coming of the Lord if we knew the time and hour that he would come. But then again, before his coming, I may die. It may not happen in my lifetime, and it's happened in nobody's lifetime. So perhaps it's even readiness for my own end or my own calling to now finish my own race and to conclude my time and this is what I'll have to present to God. So I pray during this Pascha time, let's really sow the seeds for a life that is God-centered. Right now we're prayer-centered and this is excellent and we have focuses for every day. And this is greatly amplified in the Pascha, but honestly, every week in the Coptic Church, every day has a purpose and a meaning and a gospel and a message. And it's possible to work God around your day. It's more intense in the Pascha, but use this time, train yourself and ourselves that we may watch and be prepared for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom is due all glory and honor with the good Father and the Holy Spirit. And glory be to God forever. Amen.